We want to use CYK parsing for checking if the grammar can produce this input word ABAB. We have those grammar in Chomsky normal form. That means on the left side we have a variable that can be derived to two variables on the right side or to one terminal. And we don't have empty productions or anything else than that. So we can use a simple CYK parsing. The input word is four letters long, so we draw a chart that is four letters, or oh, that is four cells high and four cells long. One, two, three, four. And one, two, three, four. something like this. And the I means uh, where um, where we are in the word or where we start. So this is like the A, B, A, B. So the, that are the, uh, the number of the letters in the word, to say it like that. And that is the length of the substring we are looking at. So at the end we want to have one, one uh, string that um, a one derivation that starts with the start symbol and from which you can derive the whole word. So what now uh, we are going bottom up, so we start we are starting here. So first, we have at the first place an A. So how can you de derive a single A from the grammar? Well, we have those T here that can produce an A. So we write down the T into this cell. And the same at this cell because um, this is the only uh, rule that can derive an A. And it doesn't really matter where it is at this point. So you can write, if you have the same letter here and here, then you can write the same into those both cells. At the second place, we want to derive a B. So, uh, what, uh, what, uh, what uh, variables can you use uh, to derive a B from? So we can maybe had an Y or maybe a Z. So we write down both into the cell. And what we are doing is we are going bottom up. Um, to uh, to find out how those words uh, is maybe derived from the starting symbol, and at this place we don't really know if the B is maybe was maybe produced by a Y or by a Z. So we so we look at both possibilities, and we have a B here as well. So we write down Y and Z here as well. So. Now we go into this cell and uh, we want to find uh, a symbol from which you can derive those A and B because um, here the one says that you start at place one and the two says that those, um, that the span of those symbol here has to be two letters wide. So one possibility um, to get those A and B from is to well, to find a symbol where you can derive from a T and a Y. So from the T you would get the A and from the Y you would get the B. So if you would have a symbol here from which you can derive T and Y, then it could be a possibility for getting those A and B part. Or you could find a letter where you can produce a T and a Z from, and then you would also get those A and B. So let's have a look. We have uh, one rule he here that can, uh, where you can derive um, T and Y from. That would be those letter X. And we also have a rule where you can get T and Z from. And that would be those Z. So we write down both into it. So, and let me color this for you. 
we could either have those set rule uh, that you that's what you got from the T and from the Z or you may have an X which you can derive to a T or to a Y or which you got from them when going bottom up. So that's what we have to do with every cell. We have to write down every possibility to uh, get those to get the next letters from it. So in this cell, we also want to find a symbol where you could derive the substring B and A. And maybe you wonder uh, why what do we want to get those B again? Because we all we already got this B from this rule, uh, but that's because you don't really know if you got the B by this by a play by a letter at this place or by a letter at this place, because this would be the case um, if the tree would look something like this, and yeah, maybe you could get something like this, or um, maybe so when these are the for input symbols, or if you find that the that you really used uh, variable from this cell, then the tree at the end maybe looks like uh, I don't know, maybe maybe something like this. So you don't really know how the, the tree will look like, so you have to find out all possibilities. So. Um, now we want to find a possibility to get F either the Y and T or to get Z and T. So let's have a look. We can get Y and T by a Y. So let's I write down the Y into the cell. Or Z and T we can get by a T. So I could uh, well I could color this for you. I forgot to color this one. So we could have the y which we got from this y and the t or maybe we had those t which we got from the from the z and the t. Uh, so you see it gets a little bit more complicated but um, uh, let's see. So at the at the third cell, we have uh, the po we want to find whether a symbol which you can which we can derive to T and Y. So that would be an X again, or T and Z, which would be those Z again. I guess I don't really need to color everything for you. And now the last cell, well, we don't write anything down into Z because we, when we write, some, if you would want to find something, a symbol for Z, from this symbol you want to derive something that starts at the fourth place of the word and, is, and has a span of two letters, but there aren't two letters because there's only one letter left so uh, it's not possible to find a symbol for that cell so we exactly leave those cells empty now to the next line where we want to find a symbol where we could derive a, where we could have a span of those first three letters and we have two possibilities uh, at the tooth line we only had one possibility to say it like that because you can only add one and one but at the third line at the third line we have two possibilities we can either get get a substring of length three by taking one with length one and one with length two or the other way around with letter uh, with the first one 
having a span of two and the second one having a span of one. So the yeah, that would be um, mm, let's say that would oh I should have write it the other way around. So if this is the source in the if that would be this cell, then this would hit the possibility of having a span of two at first and then a span of one at the se at the second. Or you could I can show it to you. It would be Oh it's this it's the same it's this so um this would be the possibility if you have um two at the second and one at the first. So it that means one possibility is to take one symbol from here that has the span of one and uh, combining it with something from from this cell which has links two because uh, this one already spans those A and we need to get those span of three to get to use another one that has the spans of the missing two so if we have one for this and one for that then we have those substring a v a which we re which we want to get so one possibility is to take t and y so it would it's where we would use those x so from this t and this y i could color this for you so you could do, use this x from the t and this y or you could use this t and this t and as you see we don't have a rule for t and t so we don't write anything down for this possibility or for the other possibility we can take one with one symbol with span 2 from this cell first so we could take either x or z which has a span of those first two letters and we need one from for this letter 3 that would be this t so we need a symbol where we can derive from x and t uh, we don't have anything for x and t or z and t and we have a t for getting z and t this z and this t so um, I could color this for you we get those t from this z and this t yeah it's getting a little bit complicated but no matter and at the second place we, it's nearly the same we can either combine one symbol with span 1 from this so y or z and one with length 2 from here so x or z so let's have a look at all possibilities we can either use y and x we don't have one for y and x and x y and z mm, we don't really have one for y and z z and x mm, we don't have any for z and x or z and z and we don't have any for that so we can look have a look at the other two cells uh, and note if you have any a really long word then you have to look at all possibilities and you uh, where you can get those um, those lengths maybe you will have a length of 10 then you have maybe can add 1 and 9 or uh, 2 and 8 and so on so you have to look at all possibilities where two lengths can up can add up to the lengths you want. So we want to have a look at the other two cells, which uh, include y and t or y and z. So we could have a symbol for y and y. We don't have a rule that produces y and y. Y and z. 
we don't have a rule for getting y and z, t and y. Oh, we have an x that gives us this t and this y, and t and z, and we could use a z to get to getting those t and z. So line three is uh, is done as well. So now we want to find one symbol, uh, which in the best case would be the start symbol, which can derive us the whole word. And yeah, we can we must have a look at all possibilities. We could use one and three adding up to four, so t and x. Uh, we don't have a rule that gives us t and x. t and z, that would be z giving us this, those t and those z. But that is not the start symbol and it's not useful for us and that is, that is not the proof that this word can be derived by this grammar. So, um, I was comparing those two. Now I have to have a look at 2 plus 2, so I take one from this cell and one from this cell, because this has a span of this two letters, and this one has a span of this other two letters. I can't combine it with those two, uh, two letters, because uh, they have a span in the middle, and then I can't find two numbers, so they, add, so they have a span over the whole word. So I want to find a rule that gives us x and x. I don't have one. x and z. Uh, I don't have one. z and x. Mm, nothing as well. And z and z we also don't have. So, but I also could add... No, I have, I have to take a look at the last possibilities. I could um, add up um, t to x, which we don't have, or t to z. Hmm, I guess I already had that. Um, maybe I forgot to look at those with length 3 and those with length 1. Ah, sorry. Okay, so uh, in these two fields, which at one to three, we don't, I didn't find anything, and with these at length two and two, I didn't find a possibility. And from, I didn't had a look at those of length three and those at length one, I guess. So um. Now, I, do I have a rule that gives us x and y? Yes, that is s, that is our starting symbol. And I have to go on looking at uh, the other possibilities because maybe I get two times the starting symbol and then I would have two trees for the input word. So, could I use x and z? Uh, no. Or t and y, or that is where I, oh, maybe I already got this z from, or, oh no, uh, t and y, that is what us, where we can put those, which we could get from those x, which doesn't match into the cell. But, um, yeah, we found, so we found three possibilities to derive a substring from a single letter but only one is our starting symbol so that means uh, the starting symbol um, yeah the input word can be derived from the grammar because in this field we have a starting symbol and I can uh, I can draw you the tree if you like to so we have the starting symbol that we got from x and y, so this x and this y. This y gave, can from this y you can derive the b. 
and from this x I draw to you, you can get t and y. And from those, uh, uh, sorry, t and y. And from this t you can derive an a, and from this y you can derive y and t. And from this y you can derive another b, and, f and from this t another a. And you see it would be the tree that you get if you take those, uh, if you look at this chart the other way around.